Hey, good morning, everybody. Ahoy hoy. Ahoy hoy. Happy Monday. <laughs> Hope everybody's uh, having a good start to their week so far. We are. I am. We've been busy. Uh, yeah, we have been busy. It's been a wow. busy morning. We were up late last night preparing for today's how-to and back at it today. Well, you were. I'd, I've already been at work. Yeah, I know. I was. Uh, I thought like, oh man, do I can do this? And I was like, oh wait, no, I need to yeah. build like a bunch of stuff. So yeah, exactly. I built a bunch of stuff. Oh, I have to turn this. Yeah, so. well, we had like arts and crafts night last night. It was. Good. It was. It was. It was absolutely. So well, let's start by saying hi to everyone. Yeah, let's say hi. Let's see who is here. Oh, Thank Monica, you, Monica. Ennis, thanks. Uh, here we go. Oh, look, you got it right there. Yeah, my um, my mouse is being a little tweaky. Uh oh. So hey, the fourth world, Adam, uh, Albert Lee, Aqua Mike TV, Aubrey, Aubrey Kovach, Kovach. Uh, Brickanista, Brickworm. Chris, Chris Monochrome or Monorail Chalice, Chalice UK Heatwave. Heat oh my. Welcome. Um, <laughs> Cornado is here. Debo Bricks. Fabu Fan MKE. Fallen Tree 23. There's a new name, um, right? Uh, we, had, uh, we had them yesterday. Oh, and again today. Welcome back. So, yes, uh, relatively new. Um, Hooded One is here. JMW, JMW Music. Music. John Luttrell, Joshua Zendu, Zender, who we are so glad to have back. Yay. So, so glad to have you back. Uh, Matt English is here. Matthew Builds Bricks. Minifig Nick. Hey. Uh, Monica Berry. Moto is here. Uh, Orange Bricks. Ozorg. Remy Baker. Rob, Rob Catcherside. Catcherside. Shane, Shane Levan. Levan. Stubot yeah, Shane. is here. I haven't seen you in a little while, Stubot. The, uh, the Brick Orphanage. The Jammy Bricker. And, and Zarakino. Kim. Hi, Hi everyone. everyone. Welcome to our little build and chat today i know it's gonna be a um it's gonna be a i think a fun one today that we yeah, do I think have so. we might learn something i don't know yeah we have some things to we have some a lot of things to go over actually right, before yeah. we get to you don't even have the, a script you just have windows stacked up over i do there. i have a little bit of a script but it's not a huge script anyway so um first of all shall we start off with um disney pins yeah you go first so we got some new disney pins which I'm super excited about. Not yeah. only did we get some new Disney pins um, online, but we also got them from Minifig Chick and Paint Pusher. Yeah, we did some yesterday. socially distanced outdoor pin trading it was, during the day. It was it just was, like being at the park. It was fun, but no line. We set up a little kiosk. I put a little outfit on, and yeah. <laughs> oh, we needed to have a dole with. We did. Well, well, who doesn't? Who doesn't? And okay, you go first. Whenever. Okay, so. I am wearing this, so I've been collecting this teacup series because I'm obsessed, um, and this is a new one uh, for me. It is a pink heart uh, teacup. Oh, look at that. There we go. Thanks, Clicky. Nice. And then oh, I've got, I'm, I'm featuring today, I'm featuring a Jawa. It's a really cute okay. Jawa, Wait, too. this way, it's backwards. <laughs> Hi there. Yay. Right? Just... just little eyes. All right. <clears throat> Very fun. Uh, so yeah, oh gosh, I didn't even put mine on. And yes. we're playing D and D tonight. It's our oh my goodness, Monday night that's D &D. right. I yeah, forgot. So that's... we're going into the underworld once again. That is bit. It's <laughs> yeah, once that's again, fun. like every day. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, what you said there was some news or some stuff you wanted to talk about. Yeah. So um, well, first of all, oh, and we have people's submissions, everything. Yes, we Got do. It. So I'm on board now. First of all. Um, it is Lego's 88th birthday today, I saw on Yay. Lego's social media. So happy 88th birthday, Lego. Yay. And that was when they were making, you know, wooden stuff uh, before they were even making, you know, the bricks and all that stuff. So that's kind of exciting. That's a, that's a lot of toys. It is, that it's time, a lot right? of toys. That is that some time. dedication to building. Um, and it's also somebody else's birthday today, but I don't know if she's here or not. But uh oh. If, um, I'm hoping. Um, the, let's see. Let me see. I don't see. Well, even if they're not here, well, we can okay, let people we'll see, know. We'll let people know. It is also Holly's birthday, y'all. Holly. And I don't see her in the chat, so I'm going to try and entice her to come be in the chat. Come and bask in the glow of <laughs> birthday wishes. Um, yeah, she isn't here yet. I'm going. You know what? I'm going to. I'm going to text her right now and okay. tell her uh, that people are oh um, clamoring for her on on the the stream people are clamoring, clamoring for you wow i got stuff for your all over the table presence here. on the stream there we go all right 
Yay. All right. Yes. Well, we'll see if Holly comes around. She was here yesterday. We had a really long, it turned out to be way longer than we thought um, because I couldn't shut up um, chat. Right. We had a very long chat. It was great. About creativity and yep. the artistic process and Lego and Writer's it was all very Yeah, it was all, all very <laughs> it was all very heady stuff. Yeah. I gotta say. It was good, but we had lots of lots of people hanging out with us. Yeah. Oh look, it's minifig chick. Oh, uh, okay. She said she's on a conference call right now. Ah. Um Okay. But well when she gets here, um, I'm gonna tell her to make her presence known. <laughs> Chris Monochrome or Monorail? Who was it? I just saw a picture. Someone found their Lego from when they were a kid, and it was two bins this, about this big each, and one was Fabuland and one was Monorail. Yes, we I was it. like, really? Losing it. The Fabuland Monorail. Um, so, uh, hi, everyone. Uh, Zach b b uh, Builds Lego is here. He says, hi, everyone. Oh, cool. John Latrell. <laughs> Still submit build challenges to the Google form. Yes. yes. So everybody, I did put the Google form. Uh, I did put the Google form up. Oh, for um, the new challenge. Up for the new challenge. It is up and available for you to use. And I'm gonna try and wow, this is being super fussy. It's always something. There we go. Yep. Ta -da. Oh, look at that. Hi, that's more cheerful. There, we're not in like in down a hole now. All right. Okay. So, <laughs> um, what was I saying? Where was I at? I got distracted. Well, by we technology. had several different things. You had you put up go. the new um, submission form. Oh yeah, so I put up the new submission right? form for the new challenge, the monochrome challenge, and there's been a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. This was submitted to us by Lana Zaccardi, um, and the you know she said monochrome, and then there were some questions about whether it should be all one color or um, a color family. So what we decided yeah. was that we would allow color families because I know that not a lot of you. Have, like not everybody has like a ton of one color of brick, okay? Um, so, but what I what I say when I mean color families is like when I say purple, I'm I'm gonna be making mine out of lavender, purple, and medium purple. Okay, so those are the color families. So like if you're doing pink, this is a pink. I guess this would technically be arguable, but I you know dark pink, pink, and this is you know they say fuchsia. Um, we are giving you a pass on, but that does not mean that you would use this and then also include black and white. Nope. That does not count. No, you see it's a challenge. You see, yes, you see it is a challenge. And the challenge um, is to use... And of course, whatever brick, whatever bricks you take... Sorry there. Um, are going to, um, whatever brick you choose, color, obviously like blue has a lot more shades to it yep. than say another kind. All right? So, um, you can... Um, you can have a you can have figures that are not the same color. Yep, and we're giving you that also. But the main part of the mock should be all built out of one single color family. Okay, so all right, just for one more example, not the same color family, <laughs> <laughs> with the exception of the gray base. Same color family. Well, the tan, the gold, is... the tan. What you think? I mean, tan, tan, is, tan, tan, tan brown, is part, and dark brown. Tan right? is put in this. Tan and is part of it. No, there are no restrictions on size. Yep. Um, and we're not going to reject your piece. Right. We want to see everyone's piece. But the challenge, the hard part, is to do it in as few colors as possible. Um. Yeah. So labels on bricks. I'm seeing stuff like that should be. I think you can give you a pass on that. So. Um, but try. Yeah, I would say if you were going to go for gray. I would think light gray, dark gray. I would include personally. I would say black and white included. Oh, there's in going to be a big. There's a I know. It's going to have a. But I wouldn't put yeah. black or white with the other colors myself. I think if you see monochrome, if you see a record album or a, you know, whatever they use now. Yeah. Um, crystal. You know, whatever. And of course, like I said, <laughs> we're not going to reject anything. When you see it. But I wanted to show everybody that check it out. We have a new email. Oh, great. Just great, great, for great. build challenge photos. Challenge photos at trickybricks.com. Please yep. write this down, type it in, put it, save it into your emails. Challenge photos yes. at trickybricks.com. We'll leave it up for a couple of minutes. All right. It's so, good. We're getting all sophisticated behind the scenes. Yeah, exactly. So please do try and do that uh, and send them there. Also, the form is up. We Click prefer you. the form. But, so, a couple okay. of other things, oh, and I, I put... Just real quick. Yep. 
to answer orange bricks if you want clicky eyes on your piece you can put clicky eyes on your piece no matter what monochrome well color clicky is using. a clicky is a character he's a so character. i think that counts just like yes. with a mini fig but i interrupted you although you know i'm i'm wondering would he need orange eyes well no because if we're giving you mini figures if we're giving you mini figures yeah um, that are free of the color constraint, then I think clicky is should be included. I think eyes are pretty. That's pretty yeah. innocuous. Yeah, see, and cl and obviously, um, clicky is is not is unhappy about not being able to have his eyes, so he's going to have... I think we should let him have his eyes. <laughs> oh, he's surprised. Um, okay, Dave, he gets to have That's eyes. different clicky. So the other, the other thing about it is... When you if you do send via this email, please always say the title of the challenge yep. in the subject of the email, um, because even though this is now a dedicated email, it will still end up you know if you just put build challenge that could be anything from many yeah. weeks. So challenge photos mm -hmm. at trickybricks.com. All right, because we want to show your stuff. Um, all right, so there we go. That's cool. Yeah, I'm very excited we have that new email and, and the form. I'm grateful again today for that Shane LeVan, too, who's been so helpful behind the scenes. Yes, and Shane and I had a meeting. Unfortunately, it went really quick. But so you, if you didn't know already, we migrated our... So our website, our humble little website, started off on a friend's um, server just as a way to kind of like get us started. Mm -hmm. And then Shane came in and helped me sort of like make it into a more of a real website. And then... We ended up migrating that website over to a different server, and it, it, it it's like tricky bricks is a whole thing. Yeah, right it incurred all sorts of changes, and so now I'm finally going to be able to get caught up on changing to the website, uh, changing the website to everything that we are um, that we want it to be. So yeah, we're really really excited about where that. Where we want to get to is if you have any questions about anything tricky bricks, you would go to the website and find exactly. all, all your answers there, including. Like the form to fill out, or you know, the link to the form to fill out for for challenge uploads and all that kind of stuff. You'll just go to the website. Yeah. So I, uh, we're gonna probably be steering away from the community tab as a way to communicate with all of you, as, and and trying to move it over to the website. So that yeah. way, you just always know there's that one place. And it'd be it'd be great if we could, um, you know, if. Uh, the after hours is it um, that Zoom meeting was what. The, that, that was the tricky meeting that we Zoom, totally support. The, the, tr the tricky lug Zoom meeting that we support and didn't go to because it was... It, we, it conflicted with our schedule, and I'm yeah. so sorry about that. Yeah. But we absolutely support it, and it sounds great, and we would love to come to the next one. And we could, you know, announce um, a time or whatever on the website, too. Sure. So we will be, yeah, we will definitely be um, giving you updates about all that kind of fun stuff there. Uh, let's see. What else, Flynn? I see cool pictures up there on the screen. Well, that's for something for later. Oh, I'm so excited. Um, and then, okay, so we talked about that and that and now, oh yes. So, <coughs> we had a couple of, um, late entries to last week's and mm -hmm. we also had an extra photo for the one from the week before that from Maraid. And Maraid, if you're out there, I sent you an email there's something going on with our emails yeah, that we we're, couldn't that we find have, your stuff. We, we looked, looked in so both hard. places, like scoured yep. them both multiple times for your entry for last week's episode. But we, we want to find show it. it. But we want to show it. So send it to the new email. Um, uh, John Latrell, do you prefer Google Form or email for submissions? Google Form, 100%. If you have yeah, a Gmail account or a Google account, please upload it to the to um. To it, there. It's like magic. It and, does so many things automatically. And also, when you do that, if you could please... Yay, Molly Williams. Thank you, Molly Williams. Um, also, if you could please um, call your photo the name of how you are going to be presented. So, yeah. if Monochrome you are... Monochrome Challenge, Richard Ford. If you are Brickworm, like... Say Brickworm because you don't. If you don't want to be called by your real yeah. name and you want to be called by Brickworm, I'm using it as an example. And she's always really good about this. Then title your your image Brickworm, and then if you have more than one image, one, two, and three. And everybody, the we put a limit on the photos to one, and then we kind of let it slide for one um, for the. <laughs> For one <laughs> challenge, and it's continued sliding. <laughs> so I'd like to get back to really just like I'm gonna give it 
two. I'm going to yeah. compromise and say two photos max. Yeah, that'd be please. cool. Because then you see two different perspectives. You might see stuff in one you couldn't see in the other. But Yeah. Um, but we also, I don't know, none of you probably remember sitting through actual slideshows with real slides, but they could go on. Yeah, yeah. And I, mean, and, and I, I we, we love you guys and we love seeing what you make, but, but really it's, um, it's, uh, and also too, we want to be able to spend more time yep. with the photos with so that we don't have to kind of rail through all of them. Okay, so coming up here, I'm going to get my, my situation together right. here. Um, that's right. It was this. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. I'm getting, uh, this oh, is one of those weird. Windows and we... You see. Okay. Oh, look so, what we're doing. This is from the Minifigs in the Real World Challenge. This is from Hay Films. And this says, for the past week, I've been taking some pictures around my house and neighborhood and thought I might show some of the pictures. I know this is a late in entry, um, and I'm sorry, but I hope this is okay. We're showing it now, but we are going to have to start clamping down on, I don't want to say clamping down, we are going to have to start being a little more firm firm about yeah. um, the deadlines, because it does make it a little difficult, because we so much want to include everybody's stuff. Um, but this is a great build. But it's a great build, it's a great, um, it's a great scene, and I think that the, it, um, when I first saw it, I felt like it transcended the scale that it's at like it looks yeah, like actual so. it could be an actual to scale thing and a to scale yeah like we're, we're far away from this yeah i love the attachment of the bulldozer that studs out uh shovel attachment at the front yes I think with the are they lightsabers and faucets it looks like it looks like yeah i think that's so clever that is really and then clever. the little teeny door there too you know, to give it a uh, an angled in shape. What a fun little build! Yeah, and two by four bricks. Hello, how's it going? Welcome. That's a new name we haven't seen before. I'm sure everybody in the chat will give you a warm tricky lug welcome to two by four bricks. Get us with our Monday coffee. Have and Allison Gale is cup. here. Hi, Allison. Always good to see you. Awesome. Welcome. Welcome. All right, um, Allison. Now there's someone who builds a lot. Yes, she's prolific, y'all. She is amazing. Okay. And, and cool stuff, too. So we are... Um, oh, right. I have to do this all manually because that's Why, how cause things keyboard? go now. Because keyboard... No, no, because that's just the way I had to set this up. Oh, right. Oh, okay. Dear. Oh, boy. You got it? One, two... Bear with us, everyone. Yeah, sorry. I don't, usually, windows. I don't usually do this manually. I usually have it all set up... Um, with little like with hot little, keys. With little hot keys, and I wasn't able to do that today. No, 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 no. Look, you got it. Okay, I think it's, I think it's this one first. Here we go. All right. So sorry, everybody. Little uh, hiccup there. This is from Aqua Mike TV, and this says in the real world, the big <laughs> boss known as Nick TSD has his aim agents work themselves to carry a huge breakfast bar back to his apartment while uh, relaxing on top of it exactly. he's helping he's helping and then it looks like maybe they had a little accident like and it's dropped, dropped it. one end and i like that the expression has changed on the he's, um on the mini <laughs> on the mini very face. surprised that's really fun I like that shirt on the minifigure. That's cool. I know. This is, yeah, super fun. Awesome. Scale, Thank you, right? Aquamite TV. With scale there. Yeah, really, really fun. Um, let's see. And do we have another another entry? We do. We have, well, actually, so now we're going to go back, back, back in time. Uh-oh. And this is to the the one oh, from, from before, from Maraid. So we want, we looked at this one the other day, and this yep. is Maraid's 25-piece build challenge, which I thought was marvelous, and I love this gear. Yeah, the selection of pieces was great. And then we, there was, like, all of this debate and talk about the piece that was the background, which is actually a, um... A real piece. Real Lego piece. A real Lego piece. And so it turns out that, in fact, it is a real Look Lego piece. You can see the studs here on the side. And Maraid, if you could please remind us in the chat, what um, was it Homemakers? Was that the name of it? And that oh, is a great. rug. It's a rug, right? Yes. And then you would set your furniture. I mean, duh. Am I sorry saying the obvious here? I'm just imagining freestanding Lego furniture, not mounted to any studs. Yeah, and I just I, I love this little Lego Land. It's a cute little 25 piece build. I I think it's interesting, and I love the now that 
I'm curious about that. Uh, Fabi um, Pen MKE says yes, homemaker. Oh, uh, very good. And I'm and so I'm very curious, Mairead, what um, the the backdrop that you have set up. I noticed that it doesn't have studs that go all the way to the edge. Oh yeah, that's interesting, isn't it? Um, so is that also one of these homemaker um, builds? I'm curious, or um, sets. That's Am I it's seeing, a really interesting piece. Well, you can see close up, or does it say Lego on the I'm sure it does, because I'm sure Mairead would be. Of course she would. Yes. I want to know what that piece is. That's cool. Oh, it's the bin lid. Of course. Oh, of the, course. It's turned the, sideways. The turned sideways. I understand. Oh, it's fake blocks drawers. Okay. Uh oh, did I call it? Did I call it with a tiny stud? I think it's I fine. love this. It's so colorful. I love it. I it's great, Maraid. Thank you so much. And what a fun uh one fun what a fun little uh little build. And I and of course the the gears are up there super fun. Oh, I like that Lego emoji from 2 by 4 bricks. And I really and I also love your um the uh you, that you use the old school torso for your um, for your figure. It was really fun. This kind of big, huge color blocking always makes me think old school Lego. Like when I was a kid, just like big primary colors is what I had to build my houses from. It's true. It's true. But we have one of those. Don't we have one of those bin lids? No, we have a drawer. We unit have a drawer that unit. Has those yeah. on the top of it. So goodness, I like, think that we uh, may be at. Oh no, we still have one more thing before oh, we get we to our class. All right. Before class, the how-to is coming, everyone. <laughs> but we have one more feature. Oh, orange bricks, really? I trust that. Oh my goodness, orange bricks is saying that we missed theirs. I don't know how you sent it in, orange bricks, but I promise we will catch up with it on Wednesday. Oh my um, goodness. I try. We, we look at the <laughs> form and the email, try right? so hard. We do try. Um, oh my goodness. All right. The, um, and we even, we counted the number of responses on the form versus the number of things we were showing, right? Well, we'll look for it, Orange Bricks. We want to show everyone's stuff. We feel so um, just um, fortunate and humbled that people spend time building in these challenges. Exactly. So we want exactly. to show your stuff. Um, so we'll get that together. Um, oh, Armand Jindal, hi, welcome. Oh, Orange Brick says email. Um, to, to do what? Orange, Orange Brick says, says that their um, their submission was by email, not from the um, form. Okay, so we did switch over our email when all of that website stuff happened. So it's possible that it either got lost got in the mix or it's in the new email. Um, so I will look for sure, Orange Bricks. You know how we like to do. We don't like to leave anybody out no for sure um and maraid let's talk <laughs> i know let's have we got to set up some clear like we'll get a fax machine going yeah actually <laughs> <laughs> pagers oh my goodness okay so are we gonna do the special sticker time show and tell yes we have like a real live sticker here we go I'm everybody sick. oh well oh we that was go almost there. a perfect transition <laughs> Sticker set show and tell everybody. Perfect transitions every time. That's us. I'm a big fan of this. I don't yeah. know. We may have done this I, we before, may have but I don't shown care this, because it's awesome. But I like especially sticker number four here. We're looking at 2019. Um, is it really bright there? Yep, of Are course. They able to, um, 2019 Sweet Mayhem Sistar uh, Starship. Oh, is that what this is from? Yeah, why is this so bright? We have new camera control, right? Yeah, it's super shiny. Sorry, everybody. Well, and have we lost there autofocus, we too? Nope, it's just being troublesome. Why don't you go ahead and read it, and I'll uh, figure okay. this out. Okay, well, Sweet Mayhem's Sistar Starship, um, featuring three minifigures. Um, we should pull that back, Flynn. It's really not in focus. Oh, look! Maybe we'll get some help here. You think? Yeah, no. I don't think so. So Cookie is not Sweet having Mayhem, it today. Lucy Wild style, and um, she's featuring a reddish brown scarf and goggles. Thanks, Clicky. Yeah. <laughs> um, and just like Clicky, um, this set features a winking, scared Emmett. Oh. Clicky wasn't scared, but he's Emmett winking was. and yeah. scared. Well, on opposite sides of his head there. <laughs> wow, we have a we have a new interface for dealing with the camera. Uh, I yeah. No, it's it's um, growing pains. Yeah, <laughs> as always. <laughs> Cedar Pants Productions presents a Monday how-to. 
All right, I'm just going to make sure what we got going on here. Yeah, because we're actually going to want to show you stuff on both cameras during this. I know, shocking, isn't it? Right. Well, I'm going to pull this one bit of business over here to be ready for our how to. Hmm, it's supposed to autofocus is on. I don't know. All right. So, uh, let's see. So, today we are talking. Um, you know, we try to do these how to's every other week or so, although we may have to. Um, we may have to switch it to once a month because we're kind what of is running out, run of out of stuff that we know. Um, but yeah, so <laughs> or we'll have to learn some new stuff and share that with you. Um, and you could also email uh, us with any of your ideas, and you can do that yeah. at Flynn at trickybricks.com. This, you know, the older yes. email. That yeah. one's great for ideas or ki trying to contact us. We've the other a one. Few different things. We have. Okay, let's see. Well, so today we're talking about windows and walls, right? Yes. Okay. Windows and walls. Uh, this so is going to be... I'll try not to lose track of the chat. Sorry for talking over you, Flynn. But I think he's going to get kind of in a groove. So I'll try and stay caught up with the chat um, and see how that goes. All right. So I'm going to... Let me get Oh, look. I already pulled business. a piece off this sample board here, and I have no idea where I got it from. Oh, right there. We're good. Okay, um, so this is going to be, so this is sort of like basic wall and window treatments. So um, when you're building a model, especially architecturally, or even if you're building something that's just going to be in the background of your shot, um, you want it to, um, you know, we are big fans of detail. So window treatments and wall treatments are a huge way, whether inside or outside of a building, that you can add character and life into your into your models. Um, I'm a I'm a big fan. Uh, I'm a big fan of it. Well, as a lighting designer, I love that they bring light into the model. They I think they open it up, and they're one of the best places to extend the kind of style that separates that building apart from just a box. Right. right? Whatever style, architectural style that is. So we have a model that we haven't really shown a whole lot of. We've shown Fairly the um, the inside of it. We did a tour of the inside of it on a very early um, uh, Instagram stream. I know, in the first week we were on the air. And I think that we are going to do, actually, an episode where we tour you through this particular mock. But today, we're just kind of looking at the outside. So yeah. I'm going to bring this over. While he does that, I can, I can do a tease by saying you can think about this as a super modular. It is all minifigure scale. But the entire building comes apart and is functional on the inside and the outside. But we're just going to look at the outside today. All right. So this is yeah, um, let's turn this yeah. This down is the our oh, Empire you can see Theater the edge of our fancy. Um, and I'm going to go ahead there. and pull in a little bit here, so you can maybe see. Yeah. There. That's a little bit closer up. Yeah. All right. So you can see here that um, we have wall with treatments. And we wanted to do a, a a brick, you know, wall. But doing this completely red, I think, is a little boring. Like I know the um, if you you can do it all in dark red, and they did like the the Ghostbusters firehouse has like the all red, and there's a lot to be said for that. But have, being able to have this sort of like broken up colors, and these are all still brick bricks. These are all bricks that yeah, have everyone brick detail. has that pattern. Um, but we normally don't do more than three colors in a thing, right? I mean, you've got three here. You, well, in addition to the red, you've got this butterscotch. What what do you call that color? I always call nougat. it butterscotch nougat and dark gray. Right. So, and you can see here too that I that we've I've got a window treatment that has this lion on the top, and I repeated that across all three windows in the front. So all three windows in the front are identical, and I added these little fun pieces on here. And lions yeah. down there too. Anyway, I, I brought the lions back in art, architecturally here. All right. Um, it is. Hi, oh, we're back. Yeah, we're getting error messages over here. Uh, Minifig chick says, "Uh oh." Yeah. The yeah. Sorry, we but we. It looks like we broke out there for a second. Something happened. Not sure what. But are we back? But it looks I like we're back. back. Uh, so all right. Thanks, here Rob. Here we go. So we were talking about the. Um, we were talking about the. Um, Window the window treatments. treatments here, and what we did. And um, by the way, this whole thing opens up. We'll show it to you again at some point. But we did the, the a, a simple window treatment here, a little bit more complicated of a window treatment here. And if and you then, see this, 
as we turn this here, you can see, look, all of these window treatments are proud of the wall. So they give it added dimension, including all the way out here with these bars sticking, you know, more than one brick out. Yeah, and then you can see here that we did, I, I did a much simpler window treatment based on the one in the front, because usually on the sides, you know, the buildings are a little less ornate. And then down here, we added in these sort of insets into the wall because this wall was getting really boring. So we added these insets in. Another, With some contrasting color, and right? We did some contrast color striping, all right? And we have we added these sort of little gold pieces to be a little bit more decorative. Wow, we fretted about that detail forever. We did. We tried so <laughs> many different things, and we decided to go simple. And in case you're seeing what looks like an error right here, that little bar is actually missing because the front of the building opens up, and that gives yes, it a little Yes, and they were like they were banging to together. Yep. Um, so anyway, and again, so those stick proud of the building there. So we're doing everything possible to make this box. And when he not says proud box. of the building, he means in it front of outside. the main wall. Not, yeah, um, it's not like like the marquee satisfied or anything. The marquee sticks out of it out of it as well. We're just always trying to break those squares. Oh, look, you can see our storage of loose bricks underneath our what? set piece there. Oh, sorry there. Let's go here. Hi, we're real Hi, close up. You... Oh, we are. Hi. Didn't mean to scare you there. Boop. Oh, my goodness. So there that we was, go. That Back was to normal, the sort Empire of. Empire Theater. And we decided that it was going to have, because it had those Roman arches, we thought it would be sort of an Empire style, post, you know, sort of post-Victorian, maybe Edwardian style, and we tried to carry that through all the window treatments. Right. So we're going to go ahead, so let's go ahead and talk about, oh, Holly's here. Happy birthday, Holly. Happy birthday. Hooray. Welcome and happy birthday. Very good. I'll let, the, I'll let this go uh, a minute before I start again so we can properly celebrate Holly's birthday. <laughs> Holly cupcake time is what Shane Levan wants. Ah, uh, yeah. I well, think. who wouldn't, doesn't want who wouldn't that? Want that? Who wouldn't want that? All right. So that was oh, an Alyssa. That was an example of a um of a of a sort of simpler window treatment i mean i know this the lines seem complicated like seem to complicate it but really that was just like a single piece that i added on um so i'm going to um talk a little bit about this a less simple window treatment um yeah so this is a, a much less simple window treatment this was the window treatment that we used for our treasure of the snake queen the circular tower that went around. So I ended up making, I think, seven or nine of these. Yeah, you can see it, it glows. Glows in black light. Um, and you can see what I did is I actually used elves' fences turned sideways. Now that is, I'm not going to go into sideways building on Windows today because that's just that's a little bit more advanced, and I'm trying to keep it basic. But I just wanted to show you that all I did was with this was start noodling around with pieces and stacking them on top of each other until I found something that I liked. Can you tell that he used to be right. a professional, or, or is a professional pastry chef and cake decorator? <laughs> and I just keep adding details on until there's nothing left. Um, and you know, you can see I made a little sort of balcony. All right. Again, something that would stick out of the structure. Yes, yeah, so you and can see it from the one, side. Were there like 17 windows or something like that? There were a lot of there these was windows. A lot. There was, yeah, there was a lot. I can't remember how many I ended up doing. But anyway, yeah. So, but once the great thing about window oh, treatments is that. when you once you finally hit on the one that you like, all you have to do is repeat it. And that is one of the things that makes a building look so um, real and done is when you can repeat those architectural details like we did on the side of the theater. We had 13 I windows. Mean, on the on the theater and dozens of windows on our mega city build for Lego Masters. Yeah, and those I mean those are not um, those are those are not complicated window treatments. But when you put them all together in a line and there's five of them, suddenly it looks like a real thing, right? Well, it looks like a real building. Repetition and symmetry go a long way. Right. Um, okay. I'm gonna go ahead and head down to our oh, um, down cam. 
to the down camera. Oh, here, I'll pull this out of the way here. So right now, I just kind of want to show you some of the window choices that we have. So these are the vintage windows. Do you want to go in close up? You, or this is you cool? may remember these. I love these windows with the little forky bottom. Yeah, and they have like the little fork on the bottom. These are like super old school. Um, and so these are train windows. But when I was looking at it yesterday and I stacked them like this, I thought that it looked really kind of fanciful and almost fairy tale and almost like gingerbread house with the rounded edged windows. Um, Allison Gale says windows save space too, less to think about. It's true. They can save you a lot of building bricks, right? Yeah. So um, here is so, so like these are from the Disney Princess sets. Like these these are these window walls. Fortunately, we have things that come in lots of colors. They've got double you know double thick and single. And these will work as windows or door frames, right? Yeah. And I love these ones that have the split here. And we have glass right. for lots of these. Yeah. And uh, there's another, like a larger size train window. We've got these, which are, these are a little older school as well. They have these little tabs on them that stick out um, in front of the wall. As so opposed that, to this. Yeah, as opposed to this sort of flatter one, right? So this one, you can have these little shutters, which I love. Um, uh, and then I love this has got like the double shutter so you can do like your window framing and then you can have actual shutters that open and close and i like to put these shutters on and have them open as part of the decoration that expands the window design out and covers part of the wall right um allison says do you find using glass necessary i don't find it necessary but i think that it adds um, a, a finished quality yep. and a realism to the model, but it's definitely not necessary. No, I, I also think that it brings light into the model because all of those reflections on the glass or any light that you see through a wall, especially on interiors, I think glass helps. Um, it diffuse, it can diffuse the light. Sometimes we have um, you know, frosted pieces like this or there's even small window glass that's frosted. All right, so I wanted to go over, first of all, some really quick, easy ways. Um, well, these two are probably a little bit easier than this one, so we'll take this one for next. But You want closer up camera? This is a really great way um, to build windows easily if you don't have a ton of parts. Um, I can bring, that's, I think that's as close as I can get it, right? Okay, well, that's better. For anyone who's viewing yeah. on a small screen. All right, so this, so these windows, and this is me. Now I'm sure you've seen this done in um, uh, in Lego sets before, but this window is actually just two of these panels, right? Little C-shaped panels. They have little C-shaped panels, and they all I did was put one right next to the other one to create a window. Which is great if you're working if you're working in you know two th you know two by bricks, all right. I like the thickness of it. I like the the shape. To me, it looks sort of like it would go in a Werner Panton kind of you know '60s pad. Yeah, it definitely gives. A, and that's the thing. Like um, when you're thinking about windows and window treatments, think about the um, what you're trying to go for. What is the look you're going for? Is it a classic house? Is it a, another, you know? Is it a Victorian? Is it super modern? Yeah. So anyway, those are cool. And of course, those panels come in different colors, so you can, you know, do that, right? Okay. You can um, also use those for recesses in walls on an interior, right? Right. When we get to walls, we'll definitely talk about that. So um, this, so this next way is probably, I think, the next easiest. Um, this is the next easiest one to do. This is, and this utilizes jump plates. Um, and you can see that on the front, it has a lower sill that sticks out and an upper sill that's flush to the wall. Or if you turn it over, you can get the opposite. So you get like a, a overhanging sill and a uh, upper sill and a lower sill that's like Can you this. show those from the side, please? So that's the upper sill. And then you can see the one with the lower sill actually sticks out proud of the wall, while this one is inset into the wall. So that's always something that I think is fun to think about. Like, I think these are great in certain situations, but personally, I always like to have my windows either recessed 
or what do you call that? Outcest? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like so, sticking well, out. Well, that's why I use that that weird <clears throat> construction crowd. Right. Um, and then, why would you use another set of jump plates on the top of the window? Well, because you have to get it back in system, right? So well, for anyone, I'm going to show you. That. Um, I'm going to show you a breakdown of how I did this. So, I've um, outdent. <laughs> So you can see here, I've got my my jump. I got a little brick. I got my jump plates. Well, Holly says protruding. That's the word. I like They're that. Protruding. Thanks. Um, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna put my window in. And you know, and I know this seems weird, but think about: Do you want your shutters flat against the outside, or do you want a little bit of inset? Right, because now this unfortunately makes makes them open inside. But if you're not opening them and you're just using them for window decoration, you may find that little bit of inset adds um, to keeping your wall from seeming too flat. Just that few millimeters, that half stud distance, can make such a difference. So I'm going to go ahead and attach my window to the jump plate. So now you can see it's hanging off, and I can build up these little side walls. This. Now you can see I'm a half a pl you know I'm a half stud off now because of the jump plates. Yeah, it's a little bright there, but these all of the window studs are sticking out. Oh, there you can see an edge on it now. So now I can add in to get back in system. I wanna I'm gonna have to do this with my jump plates on the opposite side. And you don't have to do that right at the top of the window, but that's a convenient place. Somewhere in your build, you're going to want to gain, get back that um, that jump. And right? then with a plate, yeah, and then with a plate and another plate, then you can finish that off. That one just needs to... Oops. Yeah. All right, so now you can either have a protruding window or this, this kind of window. Now, if you want to do something that's even simpler than that, you can always attach those jump plates right in the center. To just get a windowsill without pushing the yeah, window. Yeah, this is just to get a windowsill on either side without pushing the window in or out. The window is still where it would be, but you now have an upper and a lower sill. And it's a nice little detail. Now, one thing to think about here, when it, depending on the color you want to work um, in, is you definitely need um, plates in that color mm -hmm. in order to make this up where this method you could do all with bricks and we got into a little bit of trouble with that um, in our mega city build for lego masters because oh we goodness. used pink and lime green and medium azure and those didn't have as many of those support bricks you know to recover from a step so I, a jump plate i love the i love those windows um another fun way to do oh you know what i just realized you're right it is that special is time it oh, is. Oh, wow. Um, we'll take a little something. break from Windows. Yeah. Um, and, and open a door. And, <laughs> and open the door for our special guest star. That's right, everybody. It is... Ah, he heard. He's already... He's waiting uh, patiently at the door for his entrance. There he is! Oh! Look who it is! A little late today because oh. his entry door wasn't open. No, Yay! I hooray, Logan! <laughs> well, his new treats are beef jerky, and I have beef jerky for me, so I just had to make sure we keep those for the right <laughs> person, right? You want another piece? There you go. And look, right there at the camera. Look, he's looking right at you. He's happy. Hap Sound of happiness? Yay, good Logan! Boy. What a good boy! Less yes! And lots oh. of <laughs> <laughs> well, Holly says, for... where are my cupcakes? They're waiting for you in Animal Crossing, my dear. <laughs> 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 oh, my goodness. Okay. So, back, oh. to, uh, back to the subject at hand. So, uh, what I wanted to show you was, um, and then more on keeping things simple but making an interesting shape, is... So we have this, um, you know, I'm going to see if maybe this doesn't help a little bit. What's that? Just turning the brightness down a little bit on our thing. So here you see that we've got this, um, this rounded window, which I am in love with. I am in love with this yep. 
um, with this little piece. We have those in tan, black, and sand green, right? Yep. So here is the problem. Um, here is the problem with these. Is these little rounded ones only fit in new arches? And I, much to my chagrin, figured this out when we were doing um, uh, Snake Queen. But if you use these older arches, check this out. They actually do not no, fit. No, it doesn't push down. And a plate doesn't do it. If you push it up a plate, then it's too. It's it doesn't work no, either. Just then it's make, too high. Just make you sad. Right. So if you're going to use these older arches, you are going to have to build a window treatment that goes outside. You know that sits proud of yeah right? and and we definitely do treatments where we'll put an arch in front of things we did that on the on the theater all those yeah. arches were in front of rectangular windows but you can very easily just use a new use arch. a newer arch right the newer arches absolutely fit and okay. this is another case where a jump plate might be really interesting right, right. To, to give it just that half half stud in the arch. I mean, this is an easier treatment, but I did want to show you about those arches because that's like, that's that's important. And of course, in a treatment like this, you could use those windows, you could use these, you can break it up in multiple ways. Right. Okay, so now I want to show you if you want to start getting a little fancier, okay? And I would call this a sort of like medium fancy. Um, so you can see I've got a pretty basic brown window frame on here all right um it's it's basic like you can see if this was if it was attached to a wall i might have used no, different please. colors but i wanted to show you i wanted you to be able to see the difference in colors but so you can see that i've got this here but this is what is so awesome about this particular one now i made this to fit this particular selection of windows and that's a a, a tall window with a medium on top you may have to adjust this if you use different sizes, um, but the idea is there. Oh, we had a right. question from Albert Lee. Um, oh, I don't know the answer to that. Why did they make different arches? Maybe specifically so they would fit with that piece. Yes, exactly. Like they hadn't made that piece, and when they in, when they created it, I think they realized, oh no. <laughs> um, okay, so this is um, these pieces are just you know separate. Right? I wonder if I, if, can I do that? Yeah. Oh, look. oh, that's great. And you can angle that a little bit. So you can see here yeah. that I've used snot pieces along the bottom. And because we know our snot math, we know that I had to count one, two, three, four bricks before I was able to put on another snot piece. Yeah. And this right? second, don't get confused by the second one. Yeah, that's don't look at that. The, that's that's a, just, just a brick a... turned backwards. All right? So, so this don't... is the fifth brick above this one, right? Yes. Four and in between. So, um, yeah, so four in between, fifth brick. And then you can utilize this great little weird piece that nobody knows how to use, <laughs> it seems like. Um, they. This is actually really handy because the, the placement of it places the top of the frame directly on top of the fr of the window frame. And you're working two plates thick, right? A plate and then a tile. Yeah, you don't have to do that. You could do that. I just liked it because I wanted to push forward a little bit more. I could I could have applied my tiles directly to this. Yeah. But I just wanted to have a little bit of um, a little bit of tiles. All right. So what if I wanted to um, now? Well, the great thing about this is now if I want to change it. All right. Now if I want to change this, it's really easy to change it because all I have to do is pull off the tile and hope it doesn't break. And all I've got underneath is a one by six plate. So now all I have to do is decorate four one by six plates to make an, um, a treatment. So, and we can do some sideways building because we're studs out. We can also color um, in tiles. Uh, um, Wil Wilfred says oops. you can use brickhead snot on top of the window or snout snot too, can't you? Um, I didn't try that, but um, I would I would check that out. We should try it. So the, the one thing here is this closes up the gap in those tiles very mm -hmm. easily, right? So um, I mean, the way it fits is perfect with this. Right. So that's why I constructed it this way. You are you can definitely try some other ones. I just haven't tried them. So here I've got my. Um, I've got my little side things. I took the top and the bottom off. 
and check this out. I've got, I found these funny little triangle pieces. I added a black dot onto them and it's just, again, it's just on a plate. And I can attach this here. Oh, that's right, I forgot I needed an extra one of these, whoops. Yeah, this one needs to sit two plates up in order for these triangles so to on rest top. on top, right? Like that. And then I made this sort of little bottom piece utilizing... Yeah, that's good with the shine on right? it. Right? Utilizing these little bar pieces, which are a super favorite for doing window treatments. These Above, bar... below, we love those. Yeah. And then I attached um, grills to the front for a little bit of decoration. So basically what I've done here is, I'll pull these off so you can see, these are snot pieces attached to the plate on the bottom with the snot piece sticking up, all right, and that's covering the studs on the front, and then I, I added these little bar pieces onto the top. And there's there's a smooth version of those bars that we use a lot, too. Yeah. And, and then... Um, I just wanted to say, Wil, uh, not Wilfred... Someone had said that that orange bit is essentially a double snout, and that's right. And then if I attach this in, uh, and again, I'm going to add an extra plate to this one. Now I have a sort of, I don't know, sort of pseudo-medieval <laughs> little uh, window treatment, uh, right? A medieval window box? Medieval Flower window box. box. Yeah, and that's the other thing, too, is you could... Oh, I had some out, but like you could you could take advantage of the these studs to put little flowers in there if you wanted to do like a flower box, right? That's... Um, that's super fun to do. All right, so that is just an adjustment on the one that we just did. So now but I'm going to take go all these off. you can go a whole other direction even. Right, so if you, let's say that you, I wanted to do something that was a little more, like I want to do something that's a little bit more art deco or sort of like Miami. Um, so I made, I used curved pieces. You can see how they're how I hooked them all together. Angle right? the other way. Yeah, you can see the tile on the top of it there. And I put a tile across the top. That can go here. I did two more, just one by six plates with tiles on them. Here. Well, I really saw yesterday how many different shades of white we have in our white bricks. And then I made a similar one, but this time I used a rat gear for some decoration. Again, making that sort of window box sticking out further on the bottom. And look at that. Now I... Um, so now I have this sort of like, I don't know, it reminds me of like the seaside hotels that are kind of like these pseudo art deco seaside hotels and in like Miami and places like that. Right. Well, of course those tan windows can be any color too. Right, yeah, you can Many swap out those. Windows. You can swap out them for whatever you want, but I just like this. Um, I just like the way that this looks, all right? So now that's all pretty, you know, that's pretty plain, but what if you wanted to do something that was a little bit more fanciful. Remember that all we're doing here is decorating a one by six plate and adding it on four of them, right? So I'm gonna, I wanna try something a little more fanciful. I'm gonna do, and now do be aware that this only attaches in one place. So this kind of wants to swing around and you may have to do some adjustments of it if you're moving it around. Um, I've well, added... We haven't used that orange snout piece very often, have we? No, no, not at all. Okay, so there I did some orange and green with some dark yellow. Now this is, um, this piece is a wheel hub. You can see it from here. And I just added some curves and I added a jump plate and an orange dot to kind of go with the rest of it. And I'm going to use it... I mean, I think you could use this several places. You could use it up here that could make an interesting top treatment. But in my in my case, I'm gonna use it on the bottom because I like the way it, it gives it the bottom of it a rounded look. And then to just go really, really out there, I'm gonna grab these two quarter, like, I don't know what you call, quarter of a half of a ball, quarter, <laughs> an eighth of a ball. A and I'm gonna put it there. Hemisphere. And look at that. Now, when this sits, here, this will Almost be flat like up awning. against the wall, and it's like a really cool awning. It kind of looks like it might be um, a 
can like a candy shop. Quarter dome. Oops. I yes, I would call that a quarter dome. <laughs> sure. Mad Max beyond the quarter dome. Um well, that is fanciful, and of course, you know, pink and purple, any number of different colors could work as long as you had the quarter domes. Right. So there you go. That's just a just an, um, a way to make this a little bit more fanciful. And of course, experiment around. Maybe you like it better. Look, this could also be done the other way. Maybe this is the bottom of the window. A little Romeo. And this is the top, and if I switch it around, then I can have... An, look, at that's an even kookier looking window right and it's just the same window but with the treatment upside down all right so that I, see, is i think that would look great with glass in it too. it would it just adds that extra sparkle it would so there is this is the way that you can create a little a little snot constructed window frame and then it leaves you just with the with the, the task of decorating four plates Oh, and Devo Brick says that last one was more Gaudi esque. What, I don't. Gaudi, I, you know, like in Spain? The, I don't, the crazy, I'm not familiar. He did the Familia Zagrada, I think. Am I right about that? Was it Gaudi who did Familia Zagrada, that, that intense cathedral that'll never be finished, they're working on for years? Okay. Um, let's see. Ah, so, mini pig chick, yes. French in shape, not so much the colors. All right, so this is, and I'm sorry I built this all out of white, but it's the colors that we have the most of, and I apologize because our brightness is so being well, so if weird. Well, if you there angle it, so the this is way, this like, is an all white yeah. window treatment, and you can kind of see how I used a um, wow, I, I used a little um, one by one plate here to finish this off. Oh, this is so such a bummer. Well, is it? Do we need auto iris turned back on? It just seems like it's overexposed, is all. Mm, yeah, maybe. Let me see what I can do about that. Otherwise, you could turn down the top light a little, because there's a lot of detail in this white piece here. There is, and this might. I think brightness. There, that helps a little bit with the glare, right? We're not blowing out the details. Right. Look at that. Okay, so you can see here, and let's go ahead and get to the super close-up camera. Yay, super close. All right, so now you can see a little bit more what I did here, all right? So this is the more this is more what I did for the theater, all right? Um, These could have been simple columns, but you broke them up with dots, right? They right. They could have been smooth columns. And if you look at most of the columns that I make, I almost always use these uh, cylinders and then a dot to kind of create a texture so it's not just a smooth or it's not just square i love those right. dots in gold near the top and bottom like a gold band yes so i'm going to show you how this was constructed it's actually not too hard All right, so what I did here was I started off with three inverse slopes to be the bottom, right? Then I added my windows on, and I added a plate on to tie it together, or, and a tile, I mean, to give it a sill. Like this. And then, now I had to noodle around, depending on the size of your windows. And now this is to make a window, obviously, that sits... Um, the, the uh, decoration sits out from the wall. Like this window would be built, in, built into the wall and the rest of this would be sticking out, right? So what I did was I went ahead and I started off with two bricks because I know I wanted a base to my column. And then I just kind of started fooling around with um, the placement of them until... You mean the placement of the dots or the, the placement, placement of the columns? Uh, the placement of the dots and the cylinders until I got a pattern that was the same all the way up. So Oh, so it could be symmetrical. Yeah, so dot, cylinder, dot, cylinder, dot, cylinder. And you may have to adjust. Um, I actually had some extra room. So what I used up here to add these decorations are these new little snot brackets. They're only a single... They're great. They're like mini snot up uphangs, right? And I put a, a dot on the end of it and used that to fill some space. Well, we don't have many of those. 
And then this is another case where you're using the arch to shape the window that's otherwise rectangular. Right? right, so by using this arch, I can, and if I dropped this down a little bit, you'd actually even, it would even be more rounded than that. And also arches and half um, half arches that create those really cool shapes are the other great ones kind of. for, yeah, those are great for windows too. I find that people are pretty forgiving of a little detail like the frame at the top of the window if you've got multiple windows and you do the same thing on all of them. Exactly. So um, then I t on the top of this arch, I added those same pieces with the little bars that I used on the black ones. They're just such a... I use these a lot. Like right there basically is the same one as the theater with a couple of small differences. Put a lion on the top, right? Yeah. And then on here, I went ahead and did a, um, a plate. And you can see in the middle. I did um, two of these curves. And then I used a snot uphang, like a full snot uphang. Because most... Most of the time when we do a, a complicated window treatment, we have some kind of medallion or emblem right over the top center of the window, right? Right. And so there's my there's my double snot. Then I put on a jumper plate. Hi, Mom. Mom's in the chat. <laughs> and then I put a one-by-one one plate. And I turned it this way so it was a diamond rather than a square. And then I just plopped that right on top. And... And again, this is this is fairly simple, but just think about at all of these places where I added decoration, these could be any pieces. These could be any decorator pieces. These could be any snot pieces. You could add snot pieces in here if you wanted to continue adding outward decoration along your columns. Yep. I mean, there's faucets, just faucets. You can put light fixtures by the windows. One thing we do sometimes is we'll take these. Um, these pieces with the bars and put them underneath and then you can clip onto those yeah so you can create like a wrought iron balcony by putting robot arms on the bottom or yeah those are super handy and then what's nice is you can see from the side it really sticks out and look at all that great um decoration that sticks out right yeah that's the these inverse slopes underneath you know john so. ruskin talked about this a lot in in architecture oh. is um, the reason to do things like that is you want to create shadows, right? A perfectly smooth building has no shadows on the face, and you create all these beautiful light and dark spots by putting stuff that stick out. Uh, do we have a signature window treatment? Yeah, it would be this one. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Flynn, Flynn's really the window treatment guy. He designed the windows on our Mega City build, and then I spent, I don't know, 90 minutes or something just assembling, assembling, assembling on those things. Yeah. So I also wanted to show you how... Um, the difference that a window can make. So this is very like white and looks like a building you might see downtown. But just by swapping these two larger windows for four smaller windows in black, you get a Ooh. very different look. Like that's a whole different building. It's so formal. Right? It's a whole different building. It's like in the in the fancy parts of Paris right there. Yeah. Right. So anyway, just just showing you that like the wind, the, you know, the you can do a lot with the window treatment, but also just the style of window that you choose to use is going to say a lot about what you're, you know, it was like I was showing this one earlier. Um, I don't think this really works in this particular frame, but check out those fanciful windows. Actually, it does kind of work we're, in this we're frame. we're almost in a crypt. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> So there you go. Just different styles of window can give you a completely different look de and, uh, depending on what they are. And of course, all of this could be super colorful. Yeah. Oh, of course. Monochrome, two colors more. All right. So that is um, that is sort of like the Windows overview. <laughs> and I think now we are well, going to move on. Were uh, these part of Windows? Oh, yes. Actually, just, you're right. Just a brief excursion into yeah. dimension there. So um, one thing, well, I get this actually sort of crosses the bridge between walls and windows. Um, and I will show you these next three pieces are sort of a sort of a crossover. So if you want to have a corner presenting building. And you're really lucky to have this piece. Yeah, this piece is 
awesome. And by the way, friends have the best printed window pieces and elves. Um, this is a great piece to have. If you do not have this piece, run out and buy this piece. You can create corner presented buildings and floors super easy with this piece. Okay? It's not so much a bay window. It's a more of a corner. It's more of a corner thing. All right? I love this piece. And I don't know if I can see... I know everybody's going to ask what the number is. The number of this piece is... Two, eight, three, two, seven. That is the number on the bottom. All right. I love um, the hooded one is talking about about um, Gaudi in in multiple dimensions. Um, and Joel Marbella, no, this is not a sticker. This is actually printed. Awesome. That's a great. It's piece. an awesome piece. I love these. And then windows. it comes with those two other support pieces, right? Um, they're just regular window, but with um, the nice same print. Yes, they come, it's in Stephanie's house, these are from, all right? Okay, now if you wanted to do a bay window, something that actually stuck out from a flat wall, this is where these little hinges are your friend. Um, I'm gonna back up a little bit here because that's a little confusing, but you can see here what I've done is I mean, here's yeah. where you have to get okay with little, you know, not cracks, but there are little openings you can see light through. And I've put columns in front of those corners before, but that's always kind of tricky. So what I've done is I've taken three window frames, and I've attached them together. Um, I've attached them together with these um, these hinges which I love. These Just are some of my favorite hinges, hinges, right? Little plate hinges. And I've attached them together with the hinges at the top here. And then these, these go the same direction. You want to do it on both sides. But the ones on the end, I'm going to turn in the opposite direction like this. I'm going to do the same thing here. Now, you can attach these here and here, and you, can, you may have to do a little bit of adjustment. Um, and what I will tell you, and I haven't, I haven't done it here, right, um, is you're gonna need, you're gonna wanna put tiles underneath of here, okay? Because we've lifted up a plate. Yeah, and that right now, on. this is not resting on anything. I mean, if you wanna be saucy uh you could but i really would suggest putting some tiles under there and well, you can hide them with other stuff and those tiles make it a lot easier to press down anything later so that you stay in system and nice and square and true right so this is a great way to do that now if you wanted to do this kind of treatment but didn't have your um this corner piece then you can kind of do the same thing but instead of the three windows you're just going to do the one window um, like this. And if you have, let's say this is your wall coming here, you can do the same thing here. And you know, oh, and you'll have to you'll have to fuss with the math to make to, to get it exactly the at, on the studs that you want it to be on, but. This is a pretty good, um, yeah, see, so like, this isn't exactly yeah, right. Yeah, it's hard, it's <laughs> it hard does for work. it to match up perfectly, but it does. Yeah. Um, the trick that I've always found is how do you oh, deal see. with the top of this? How do you resolve the top of a bay window? And usually I put a balcony over it. Yes. I put a second floor with a door coming out on a balcony, and then I just do a flat roof over the bay window. You can also put tiles on here, and then, then you can just rest whatever shape flat on the top of that. Yeah, the second floor can stick out from the first, like you see in lots of Victorians, right? Yes. Here. Okay, so like now, help with this. now we're going to get crazy. Now things are going to get crazy, everybody. All right, so let's say... Um, <laughs> Wall and window crazy. Yeah, so let's say I wanted to make a, a modern-looking building that has lots of glass in it, and, like, maybe this is my door. So what I've done here is I've just stacked multiple shapes of windows on top of each other including these divided ones to create um like when i did this is actually this is what i did when i did my um my 
thing for Google. I used this as um, a Windows. They had a window treatment that was kind of like this. When I was a and, kid, we had room dividers in in our house, and I've always loved them ever since. Yeah, I thought this looked. Um, I thought this looks really. I just think this looks really modern and really interesting. So uh, that's why I used. Uh, that's why I tried this, but. If you don't want this to be Windows, I want to make sure I'm putting this on the right way. I want you to check out, I tried this. I made stacks of colored bricks. And now you have this awesome, like, 60s Mondrian, like, wall treatment. That's so cool. This would be a great backdrop for any number of cool things. I want to... Like this is one of my favorite things. I had so much fun building this yesterday. I want that living room. I want to sit on a, on a cool, like on a medium azure L-shaped couch in front of that. Right. So just, you know, and all this is is stacked up bricks behind windows. Now, I did, um, I did have to do a little fussing with plates to get it to fit directly in these, these uh, windows that are divided in three parts. But all the other ones, I was able to just stack the bricks without... You know, you can also do translucent bricks behind window frames. You know. Yeah, absolutely. You could do uh, if you wanted to do like a um, a stained glass look. You could use translucent bricks. But again, that's um, a little further than we're going to go in this particular class. Not bad um, for basics, right? Yeah. That's, and that could be any shape, really. You know, that you can assemble with windows and doors. Yes. So there you go. There's an idea on how to do a fun, easy, colorful wall treatment. Um, you could even do one where you had a real door right here in the center of it, and it was a surround around all of that. Yes, that would be very um, Monsters, Inc. Oh, yeah. All right. Nice. Okay, so walls. Is everybody ready for walls? <laughs> um, all right, so... Walls are interesting. So you can do, uh, there's all kinds of different walls you can do. Of course, the basic is just, I'm like we did here, I'm just stacking bricks, which is great. Um, but there's lots of ways, or there's some easy ways that you can make a wall more interesting. So th so this is this is great. Okay, and I um, very old school, but it's yeah, it's very old school. It's very flat. Doesn't have a lot, a super lot of detail. But what if you wanted to make something that was not perfect? What if you wanted to make something that was a little bit more uh, ramshackle, as we like to call it? And I did uh, actually. We taught a whole class about this. All right, um, this is a wall that I built that is a little bit more ramshackle and a little bit more interesting than say this but also it has a very different feeling you know but what i've done here is kind of like we did on the theater but instead of using all brick bricks i actually combined brick bricks textured bricks running and both regular directions. yeah running both directions and regular flat bricks to create this sort of um interesting look now the thing is this takes a lot of one by two bricks and as we discovered on Lego Masters right. building our haunted house in the very first challenge, it can oh, take a long goodness. time. It can take forever. <laughs> but, but also, even though you have a wild combination of patterns and you're using one, two, three, I see four colors there, not counting the white, mm -hmm. it's unified by being monochrome, right? It's all in the same color family, so you have a lot of leeway for mixing things up. Well, and it's interesting that you would say four colors. It's actually three, but what I have here is old and new brown bricks. Yeah, the red, so, reddish brown. Yeah, brown, so right? never say boo to your older bricks that are different colors because they can make a really, really interesting look. And so, yeah, so this adds color and texture all at once. But I would say that it's not, um, uh, no pun here with gaudy, it's not gaudy right. at all. I think it all sits together really nicely because of the unifying brown. Yeah, and you can also do, um, you could do the same look, but with tiles. It would take more tiles, but then you get this very sort of modern, um, like, wood um, tile look. But again, that's a little bit more intricate than we're going to go into this today. This is pretty easy. That's just an interwoven wall with, with one by twos, right? Yeah, it's pretty, it's just, it, I, you know, I say easy, but also, too, I still spent a lot of time making sure that I had the colors I wanted next to each other and that there was never more than, you know, X number of bricks and in the same grouping of one color, except for brown, yeah. which I wanted to be my main. 
Well, like when we talked about landscaping or ramshackle, what I usually do when I do this is I do two things. One, I soften my focus. I try not to think too carefully about it, and I just put, 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 put. But I also edit, and I'll say the rule is no more than, say, three bricks of the same color cut touching. And if you have a couple of simple rules, like only perpendiculars or no more than three bricks touching, and you repeat that over a whole wall, then you have a complex shape. Right. So um, I have um, this piece, which you can't really see because, of course, I chose a white one. Oh, here's a tan one, actually. This piece, which is used for um, sliding doors, you can see that it's got this little, like, kind of T-shaped ledge that sticks off of it. Bye, Aubrey Kovach. Bye, Thanks Aubrey. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much. Um, so it's got this little T-shaped ledge. You can put this on a wall, and it instantly adds adds a little stick out piece. Well, now you have like a gutter, right? Yeah, and you can. And what's nice about it is even if you think, oh well, if somebody's looking at it right from the front, they can't see that line. But what it does is it casts a shadow underneath of it that gives it dimension. You know, I've right. actually even, I've painted in shadow underneath stuff like this by putting a, a darker colored plate underneath. Mm -hmm. I'll look at the places where shadow would normally be and paint that in with plates sometimes. Right. But that's a little, that's another level. Yeah. So that is, so those are, so that's an easy way to do a sort of ramshackle wall and this piece is your friend. <laughs> this little ledge piece. It comes in so handy and it comes in, um, now the only thing is it, it comes in eights and twos and that's it yep no, so uh, no ones or there's no, no numbers there's no ones unfortunately and it's hard to do i've not figured out how to do a corner with these um but anytime i find a detail an architectural detail or a brick that has a thing smaller than a stud i think about it for architecture yeah all right so this is a really easy 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 shingled wall right this is um this is this is uh a so very we, easy shingled wall so what we've done here gray background white bricks here yeah aged white bricks yes so all this is is stacked up all this is is stacked up um snot pieces all right and you can see that because of the way the snot is, remember, because, we, because we're not using snot math, you won't be able to do that. But you can do this, and if you really think about making the bricks underneath of it a very different color than your shingles, then they're going to show up even more. So this is, I mean, I say shingle, this is more like aluminum like siding. siding. <laughs> yeah. They, well, if these were like, you know, bright yellow behind there, or if you had a dark color siding and, and had a light background. Yeah, so this is all, so this is a way to create a, like a nice, smooth, even look. But what if you wanted to do something that was a little bit more like this? Well, then I've made this version that has alternating different colors of tiles on it. And it's also nice too, because it kind of looks like a brick, like an actual brick wall. Yeah, like you get grout in between, and you, yeah. could, you could definitely color it to clapboard. do that. Clapboard, yes, Monica, that's right, uh, yep. clapboard. And this gets harder when you start working around windows and doors. You're it gonna does. You're going to want to have a bunch of different shaped tiles for this, and the one by threes will help you out. Right. So what, I, what we wanted to show you, though, was that um, you don't have to have your snot, you know, your snots going all the way across. You can leave some spaces, and as long as you use the right size of tiles, you can cover that over. But what that allows you to do is to have other things on the other side. So I was able to, um, or actually Richard put this together, but he was able to add a clip onto the onto there so he's like snot piece snot piece snot piece with a clip flipped over on the other side and then this one he put a snot piece on this side so that he could hang the little picture of frankenstein of frankenstein it's a creature all right <laughs> yes look how much more fun it is crooked so you can actually do both things with a little bit of pre-planning okay 
Let's see. I like that one a lot. Um, yeah, that um, the the siding technique was used pretty heavily, I believe, in the old fishing oh, shack. Look what we've got here too. If you're gonna do this, oh, and yeah. use dark brown, you're gonna have sad broken plates when you try and take them off. Oh boy. Dark brown likes to break. All right. So this is um, this is kind of going back to that for like wall treatment that we did, but this is a little bit more solid. It's got the bricks and it's got the. Um, alternate color bricks, but what we've also what we've done here, and this is a very popular technique. What we've done here is we have built in a snot piece and put a tile over top of it. So, and I did it in contrasting colors so you could see it, but those could be all the same color or closer colors. Yep. So there's there is. That's interesting. And if you see here, using single ones, you can do this if you stack two next to each other, but by using um, a headlight brick, you can actually sit back your tile even a little bit further. So you can see like this one sticks out further than this one. It just depends on what you're going for. All right, so headlight bricks or regular bricks. And what I love about using a regular snot piece is if you don't use a double like we did here and you only use a single, you can kind of like, and it looks yeah. like the like it's falling apart in some way. And if you were doing a stone wall, you know, instead of bricks, you could use cheese wedges, right, on it, or or other shapes, and you know, put other things to hang things on too. Yeah, I think this is a I think this is a really fun method. I love this. It just adds such great dimension and. Um, and like I, medieval villages look great. Exactly. Downstairs. Yeah, castles, stuff like that. Okay. So that's a good that's a good wall. Oh, one thing we didn't point out on this one is that you need to have a plate. Oh yes, I'm so sorry everybody. Yeah, if you're gonna do this this method, you do need to put a plate on the bottom of your wall so that you don't hit the 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 studs here. And again, if you're covering these up like with plants or whatever, then it doesn't really you know nobody's gonna see it, All right? Okay, so this is the curse of the reddish brown. Yes, I try to be very careful with reddish brown and dark brown tiles. Now, They're this delicate flowers. This is a really cool technique that we kind of learned from a bunch of different people, uh, but Mark uh, Crookshank does really well. And I'm just so, learning it myself. This yeah, is an experimental wall here. So this is creating a cracked wall look using slopes and inverse slopes. And then putting a different color behind there so you can see it. Now, I think ideally um, this would be one stud thick, but yeah. we have the bricks we have. Yeah, we had a bunch of um, those steep slopes that you're going to need. Um, we had those in two wide, so I did it that way. And normally, you, I would use, unless I'm making like a Klingon, you know, place. <laughs> a Klingon place. A, you know, like if I... I you know, for that I might use dark brown or black and red in the background, but normally I'm more subtle than this. I just wanted you to see. And this is the smallest opening I was able to get was by stepping this inverse slope up by one plate, I could get that tiny thing. Got so I sliver. and Mark does a lot more subtle cracks than They're this. really his are really amazing. But this at least gives you an idea that you can see you just like you're just and you have to experiment with this one that's the thing yep. you just have to experiment until you get something that works i wasn't able to figure out how to cover over these studs here because the the angle right next to it prevented me from putting a tile in there but you know you can have plants and all that it's awesome. but it's fun to make walls with holes in them if you want to go down that rabbit hole and I also wanted to show you and i forgot unfortunately to put this together so i'm just going to grab pieces right now um, whenever I do interior walls, um, uh, let's see, grab some pieces, let everybody know I'll be right back. All right, he's going to be right back. He's just right next to us. He being Flynn. Oh, yeah, we didn't okay. even... Yeah, so, so I'll say it's first. Wow. <clears throat> so when I do walls, and I'm going to just pop this wall off of here. <clears throat> Um, one thing to think about is if you're gonna if you're gonna do your walls and you're gonna tile your floor and this is just a me personal me thing, I like to put a plate down to 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 um, make up for the place where all the tiles are gonna go and I love tiling a floor. 
Um, so wait, why would you put a plate down? You mean to put your because you're going to gonna put, put to raise your wall to up to raise your wall up exactly. Same with door sills, right? Like I I like to raise the door sill up one if I'm going to tile the floor. Yes. So these are things to think about. Those are also things to think about when you're putting your windows in. Is are they going to be proud of the wall? Or are they going to be flush with the wall? Are you going to be building? outside because it, it it takes plates a lot of times and you have to do some adjustment when you're building them to to get back onto system again um and yep. if you're not it's really easy to get off um to get off of system so all right i'm gonna so what i like to do is i love using palisades bricks for this purpose um that's these ones we usually call logs yeah right? these log palisades. bricks and so then castle part i think is a palisade then you can build up your wall and tan and brown just happens to be. Um, Do you want course. some one by twos or something? Here we go. Uh, let's see if we can make this work. Of course. We can. Yeah, here, let me get you some one by twos. Uh -huh. Sorry about that. Um, here we go. So I can just keep building up my wall. Right? And this makes a great little sort of like um, baseboard look. And it adds some texture into it. When you I've do done that in gray for stone as well. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just keep adding some bricks on here. I love Palisades bricks. I use them in lots of things. I used one in the, the center of the, the camera mechanism for the Mars rover. And then, another th and then what you can do is once you've got the wall as tall as you want it, Having a little board around the top is not terrible either. Of course, you could build a shelf into here. You could build a ledge in here, whatever. You could build snot pieces in here to hang pictures or we do, what have you. We do single or double plate stripes sometimes, right? Yes. One color and then another. Um, plate striping is is really, really interesting. Um, and I think that's something, a, a way to keep your wall from being just a big, boring expanse. If you meant, like back on the theater, we have those dark tan... Oh, we, we have that dark tan striping here, right? Um, it's the same. It's the same idea. You could use bricks, yeah. but um, plates are going to give you a much more like elegant, and you can do you know multiples. I like to like if my wall is one color, then I like to do um, you know a contrast plate, wall color plate, contrast, and you get two stripes. And if you follow that all the way around the rooms, I think it really makes the room. To me, it makes the room feel more real, like it's painted. You know. Yeah, for sure. Let me see. Where are we at here? One, two, three. There we go. Hi. Hi, everyone. So that um, that pretty much wraps it up for our wall and window basics. Um, if you want basics. to, um, if you want to have a little bit more uh, in depth and do some crazy, this guy is like. Um, I'm going to show you. This guy's like my idol. I love this guy. Um, uh, let's see. Of course, it's not going to. So this is, um, his name is Ralph Langer. He is amazing. He's Rang Hall on Instagram. That looks Dutch to All right. me. I wonder if it is. And he does amazing wall and window treatments. And oh, wait. I mean, just... Look at that with the holes in the, in the brown. Yeah, so this this he did. In, these are all t these are um, tiles and plates stacked on top of each other. With he's got like inverse curves built into it to create these great cracked walls. Wow, this guy is amazing. If you want to see some really incredible, I mean, look at this stuff. These are really really look incredible. At this, um, the quarter quarter round tiles in this window thing are great. Yeah, well, I used the dots ones in my uh, Unikitty uh, wall, and this sideways built building on walls is another whole thing. I love this Lego rock tutorial is gorgeous, and the Lego panel wall is gorgeous too. So anyway, take a look, um, Rang Hall R A N G H A L L on Instagram. Um, really great. You should be following him. He's incredible. Um, and also his builds are just outrageous. So you should definitely, um, definitely check that out. Uh, there we go. So that's window and wall basics. I think we'll do, um, we talked about doing something like dormer windows in a larger discussion about roof treatments. Yeah, so roof treatments is something we'll be doing. That's door kind treatments. of a whole thing on its own. Like yeah. door treatments, we might also do steps and entryways. Yeah, so th that's all kinds of little things that you can do. So hopefully you found some, um, learned something new today <laughs> if one, in one place or another. Um, I love that Gaudi came into it. What amazing architect. 
Uh, and Artist. I don't. Yeah, I, now I'm gonna have to look it up. Yeah, we'll ha we'll have a look. You've seen his work before. Yes. Yes. Um, so I imagine I have because I've seen a lot of art, but I just never. Sometimes I don't. Oh, know. you'd be like, oh that. Oh that. Yeah, it's a singular style. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope you had fun with it. We like doing these how tos. We had our little crafty night um, putting together all these little samples. Um, last night that was fun. So don't forget, um, you are now going to be emailing us oh, yeah. with your challenge with your challenge photos to a different email. So monochrome. I don't want everybody to get confused. Not monochrome. It's challenge photos at trickybricks.com. Challenge photos at trickybricks.com. But our preferred method is the Google form, which you can go into the community tab of our of our uh, YouTube channel, and there's a link there. I posted it up this morning. Um, the it's Google easy. form is best. It's yeah. easy if you have a Google, um, you know, email address. Yeah, and I absolutely. Think they're, they're free, right? Yes. Um, and we don't work with Google, but we like their tools. Yeah. So another, um, uh, you can also, if you want to get a hold of us via the snail mails Yay. you can get us at Flynn and Richard P.O. Box 11517 Oakland, Oakland California 94611 and um, I happen I happen to have uh, I happen to know that there's a couple packages there waiting we're going and tomorrow morning I heard one of them is for my birthday and I'm so excited Yay. I can't wait um, it's, uh, yeah and so I promise if it come if I'm gonna wait to open it until my actual birthday even though I want to open it yep. the minute that we get it I'm not gonna and do we're, that we're making progress on being able to send out those um, send out those generously donated bricks those bricks donated by Hooded One yes don't forget about the Tricky Lug bricks that were donated the coral Tricky Lug bricks that were <laughs> donated by Hooded One um, those are amazing, and if you want one, there is a form on our website, trickybricks.com, that you can fill out, and we will send it to you. It's free. We're figuring um, out how to send out lots of mails all at once. Yeah, and we do, and we also have, um, so, yeah, so I think we talked about this before, but in case you weren't here, we were taken by surprise by this wonderfully generous gift. And, um, you know, we decided, hey, we want to send them all out. And we announced it on our 100th show when the day that we got them. Hey, we're going to we're going to oh, do this. Mark, Thanks, yay. Mark. Thanks, Mark. Um, we're going to uh, we're going to send all these out. Well, of course, what we didn't think about is like we need envelopes and address labels and return address labels and uh, postage and a printer. We're doing so... <laughs> we're going to do all that and we're going to get you those cool little bricks. So we are um, we are we are excited about that. And we are excited to get them out to you, but it is going to take a little while for all that stuff is like kind of slowly dribbling in while we get it all ready. But we'll definitely let you know when we're when we're getting it out, so you can make sure and look for um, for that in your mailbox. Our hobby, our hobby is out of control. Our collective hobby is out of control, it's... and I'm so glad. And again, happy 88th birthday to Lego. Yay! And happy not 88th birthday to Holly. She's not 88. No. I don't know. I think she's what, like 28? Something I don't like that. Know. Timeless. How does she she's, even have? Children? I know. Only her hairdresser knows for sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! All right. Well. Oh, and look, we got. It looks like we got up to seventeen sixty while we were while we were on the air, which is great. Oh yes, I nearly forgot. We are doing we are the subscriber do drive. When we reach 2,000 subscribers, we are going to be giving away the Monkey King Warrior Mech. So now is the time to tell all your friends, come check us out on the Tricky Bricks Build and Chat for, uh, and subscribe for a chance to win the Monkey Kid, Monkey King Warrior Mech. I know, and I'm just going to point out, it's a mech on yes. top of everything else. Yes. It's cool. It's, it's gonna... sitting, we have it sitting right there. With so much of people's art that they've sent in, too. Yes. So we are, uh, yeah. I all think that. that did we cover everything? Did we cover all the I think things? we did. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining us. Hope you had fun today. We are off tomorrow, but we will be back on Wednesday with a I think build we're, we're of gonna some gonna kind. We're going to build a set. We're going to build a set. We used to build sets. We're going to build a set. And now we do it once a week. I don't know what it'll be. Who knows? Maybe we'll even put a poll up to see what people are interested in. Build and check. Yeah. So check out, and then don't forget to. And again, it's in. It's still getting up to speed, but we do have trickybricks.com, which is a great place that you will hopefully be able to um, uh, 
keep up with all things Tricky Bricks when we're not actually on the air. It'll be a Tricky Bricks home all away right. from home. Thank you, the Brickmasters. Thanks so much. Um, uh, oh, and also, too, uh, likes are awesome. Subscriptions are awesome. You can hit that subscribe button. Also hit that like button. And also hit that bell button, because the bell button oh, is what's going to yeah. remind you when we're actually doing shows. You'll get a little email. Those guys, good stuff. those guys are blabbing again. <laughs> I know, exactly. <laughs> um, so thanks, everybody, so much for joining us. We will see you Wednesday at 10 a.m. And until then, don't forget to stay safe. Stay healthy, wash, wash your hands, hands, wear your mask, and we will see you on Wednesday at 10 a.m. Happy right. building. Happy building. Bye, everyone.